Doug, how's it going over there in the lab? Excellent. Glenn, we are about ready to start with a relievant basivertebral nerve ablation. Awesome. And so this is the typical needle. It's seven gauge. It has a bevel tip. It has a bevel tip and it also Great, yeah. So it also has a diamond tip too, so you can use one of the two of these. And it has directional um, arrows for which way the nitinol nickel titanium wire will go and direction about which way the needle will go. And so this is removed like this. The uh, nitinol directional stylet is placed through this and this will direct into the vertebral body. And the goal is to hit the terminus of the basic vertebral nerve. This is about 50% of the way from top to bottom and 60% of the way back from the anterior portion. And so that is where we would like to ablate the basic vertebral nerve. And this kit is directional and it's made for that. So let's see, we'll start here at uh, L3. Let's move up just a hair. And this also is a very flat approach. This is more similar to the approach we used for the spine jack, nine o'clock and three o'clock rather than 10 o'clock and two o'clock. So very similar to the transpedicular approach. In fact, it is a transpedicular approach, something that people should be fairly accustomed to. All right. All right, let's go lateral and see how we're, we're doing. Okay, looks like a pretty good trajectory. We're starting to get right in the posterior portion of the vertebral body. I'm gonna swap the stylet for, for this, and this is, thank you. This is the nitinol stylet that goes in through here. We can remove this. And this is what does the directional capability. The edge of this is beveled, and it's beveled to accentuate the directional capability of that. This is peak polyether ether ketone. This is one of the approved devices for spine, and this is a kind of a plastic, but the same as, as what inner body fusion implants are made out of, lots of them. <clears throat> and this is directional capability, and this is the wheel that you turn to have incremental advancements. So we're gonna deploy that all the way down. We're gonna put this in, and the best thing is to put it in, give it a crank up, and consistent steady pressure. We show all the way down. We're gonna see the white tab in there. And so we'll take a look, see where we are. All right, so I'm gonna wheel this back a little bit. We're gonna drive that directional cannula right in there. And a couple more turns on the wheel. We'll try to, try to guide that sucker in there. And you can tell by the, the distal portion of that nitinol wire as it comes out and it starts to turn that flared distal portion will foreshorten, so you can kind of get an idea. And you can also see the nitinol um, inside the cannula, and you can see that it's directing, and, it, and if I can change it here in a minute, I'll change the direction of it. You can kind of see where the overall, overall direction that the internal stylet is pointing. And so this is 50% up, about 60, maybe 65% of the way from the front to the back. 
the basovertebral nerve comes out like a trunk of a tree, and this will come out <clears throat> from the back. The basovertebral nerve is a branch of the sine vertebral nerve, which is a branch coming from the dorsal root ganglion, and this will branch into and run along the basovertebral plexus, and then will give will arborize top and bottom, and it will give rise to innervation of the disc and the end plates. So the uh, disc is relatively avascular and aneural, and the end plates, whenever you have motor changes, have small erosions, uh, and this has been well categorized by anatomic studies, and this is what transmits pain. So this is our lateral view. We'll come around, <clears throat> we'll take an AP view, and this is hopefully far enough across from ipsa to contralateral. And that is pretty good. What do you think, Brad? Is that pretty good? That's perfect. So I'll just rotate it back a little bit. I'll put the flared distal portion right in the center of the vertebral body, about right there. And I'll pull out the stylet. And we'll place the probe. And this is a bipolar burn. So this probe goes in and we place it in the center portion of the vertebral body, right there. So you, you see the radiopaque distal tip and you see a little dot and a less radiopaque proximal portion. That's so the dot goes directly in the center. And so that is center. And so by doing this, we'll take the sheath away and the sheath will, by doing, rotating the wheel, we'll pull the sheath proximal and we want to make sure there's a white band on this radio frequency ablation probe. We want to make sure the sheath is pulled back proximal to that white band before you do a radio frequency ablation. Otherwise, it won't be ablating the tissue normally. So we'll take it all the way back just to be safe. And after that, we'll ensure that the dot between the radio opaque and the less radio opaque areas contact points was right in the center of the vertebral body. So that looks really nice. Right in the center of the vertebral body, let's take a lateral view. And we hope that this is close to our area that we previously identified with the, the nitinol stylet. So there we go. So we have it right at, at the terminus. Let me try one more time. Clear view. Yes. So right at the terminus, at the, of the basal vertebral nerve. This will be right before it arborizes, and it's uh, about 60% of the way back. This is about that, 60, maybe 65% of the way back, and, and the terminus will be the top of the trunk of the tree. So you can ablate that all the way from the, the posterior portion where it comes in along the basal vertebral plexus right before it arborizes. So that whole swath of territory is open to ablate. You wanna ablate the nerve before it arborizes, but you want to stay one centimeter away from the posterior vertebral body wall. So uh, we're about a centimeter and a half, uh, perfect position. So if you get closer than a centimeter, you put the cauda equina at risk of thermal injury. And it's for each disc. <clears throat> for example, for this disc, we will ablate at this level and the one above. So for each affected disc, you will ablate the, the basal vertebral nerve above and below. And for, you know, for, if, for example, if it, were, uh, if it were the previous disc, we'd ablate there and above. If it's this disc, we ablate here and then one level below. And that is basal vertebral nerve ablation. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much, Doug. Let me see if uh, we go back to the uh, panel here, see if or the uh, crowd here, if they have any questions. Oh, we're considering uh, questions. So this is, uh, has been studied a lot. There's level one data on this. And uh, quote the data from the SMART trial, you have about 75% of patients respond. So Rama was talking about <clears throat> the response rate to genicular nerve RF. This is about the same, but a 75% of people respond 
on the average, the pain reduces about 75%, and it appears to be uh, durable or permanent. We have between six and seven year data out that the people that get good pain relief are still going. So for people with uh, stable vertebralgenic back pain, discogenic slash vertebralgenic back pain, uh, one or two levels between L3 and S1, uh, for patients that have pain, this has become an absolutely essential part of my practice because these are patients that don't respond well for fusion surgery. That we have very little to help them. These typically are patients between 50 and 55 years old on the average. The patients that have internal disc disruption tend to be on the range of uh, 35 to 43, somewhere in that range. And internal disc disruption with discogenic back pain is, a little, is different than vertebrogenic back pain. These are patients that have uh, degenerative disc disease with modic type one or two degenerative end plate changes. And I always like to uh, perform discography. Discography provocative and anesthetic, cause the pain, take the pain away. If their the pain generator is those discs, are those discs, then I'll go in and do basal vertebral nerve ablation. And because of the lack of other good alternatives, and because of the fact that this works exceedingly well with a great amount of pain relief, functional improvement, uh, level one evidence supports both of those in addition to uh, significantly less opioid use. So this is something that is, is essential, the ability to, uh, to ablate the basal vertebral nerve. So I would encourage everybody to try this. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Beal. You bet, thank you.